your spirit will be upon us and your grace will be revealed in us. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. We're in a very powerful teaching. Everything we've ever taught was powerful because it was building precept upon precept. And when that happens, the building that's going up is the Christ. Amen. And we're going up into the measure of the stature of his fullness. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Our scripture continues from our Wednesday study that to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Let's think about that word just a little bit before we just let it sink in. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Thank you, Father. So many things already been said and been taught, but we want to pull some things together. And we want to keep in mind that it's in the Lord, in God, we live move and have our being. Now we know that right here. We've been taught that from scripture. We can read it in the word. Here's the, the key. Are we always mindful of that? You see that? Do we have to change persona, everything about us because we get in a different environment? And we're here because God wants us to know that we're in the one who changes not. Amen. Jesus the same yesterday, today, forevermore. Amen. We have to keep a conscious mindset of the fact that it was our Father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. He didn't say work for it. He said to give it to us. Amen. We're in the Father's house. If you look at the message of the prodigal son, you'll find that the son that was in the house and the one that was restored, all the father has belongs to the son. Amen. You see that? Yeah. Remember he told us, all I have is yours. Yeah. Are we really walking in the daily mindset, moment by moment mindset, all the father has is mine? Yeah. We'll stop asking for what we already have. You see, you hear that? We won't ask for what we already have. It'll be just like that. Lord, we thank you that your spirit is upon us. And as long as your grace is revealed in us, then we'll please you. See, that? that's what a son does. To do the will of the Father. Not our will, but his will being done. That's the way it originally started out. Man was a garden in a garden. If you can say it like that. You, the scripture said we are the planting of the Lord. You hear that? The planting of the Lord. You hear, hear those, those, uh, those expressions? And like I said, we have a Western mindset and we need, really need to kind of get familiar with some things out of the East because that, that, that culture was there before the Bible was written. You understand what I'm saying? So we, got, we need to hear some things that are coming out from a different place. The planting of, that's all those people knew then. See that? We're the planting of the Lord. You should be able to look at things in the earth and see how God does those things and find out how special you are to him. If you can watch how something else grows, you ought to be able to see how you can grow spiritually. See that? Those are the things the Lord wants us to know. See, the Proverbs tell us, get wisdom. It's a principal thing. And you may say, well, if I have wisdom, I have everything. But it also says, get understanding. They almost sound interchangeable, but they're not. Listen here. Wisdom, you can have skill and knowledge. But if you don't have understanding, if you don't have discernment, you don't know what to do with it. That's why people are abusing God's people with his holy word. That The wisdom is there, but they don't have the understanding. They don't have the understanding that whatever you say to someone else, you're saying it to yourself. Whatever you do to someone else, you've done it to yourself. Because we're all, listen, one. Listen to everything from the start of the service. Because God is, God is in all of us and he's building something. You understand that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Know that you are a vessel with a treasure. Know that you're an earthen vessel with a treasure inside of you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Isn't that powerful to have a, a, a treasure in you that can change form like it wants to? Y'all hear God? Go from word to spirit, just like that. You understand that? Hallelujah. 
And the, the beautiful thanks, Elodie, for bringing Cana back up again, because if you understand Cana, that, that word really means, it's, it says read and we talk that, but with, there's some words that go back to a prime root that is, is telling you that that word means possession. If you go around with the mindset that God says it's his pleasure to give us the kingdom and that's a possession, your whole life will change. Amen. Your whole life will change, I'm telling you. Your whole life will change. It will be, I mean, for something to just out and out worry you, it'll, it'll pull you back center. And that's the beautiful part of it. Even if you did, you know, your thoughts went something like, it'll, this power will pull you back yeah. to the center that Christ is. Yeah. And remember this church that we're talking about, Ephesus, they left their first love. Mm -hmm. Christ was the chief one, first as being chief, the principal one. You can't leave that and go worrying about other stuff. Mm -hmm. You hear that? First, the, the first love, glory to God. So when we talk about paradise, we looked at that in Wednesday, Wednesday study, but I want to go back and remind us of some things. Paradise is not a physical place you're going. Mm. You hear this? Right. Listen now, a physical place. It's a spiritual place in the, in the heavenlies of God. A spiritual place. Isn't it wonderful when we draw from that place and, and see how it, it affects this realm? You're, you're here there. I know you've experienced that. You've had to. Oh, yeah. See that? The state of being. Isn't it amazing? I go back and remind your scriptures that we kind of grow up on. Paul said to, the, in, to Corinth in the second letter, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. How many times have you all heard me quote that scripture? I'm afraid that as the serpent beguiled Eve, now notice he says Eve. That's the name Adam gave her. As a serpent beguiled Eve, so your what? Minds will be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. You hear that? The mind. This, listen, we've got to always have this awareness of what God said. Not just tuck it back in your mind and pull it out Wednesday and pull it out Sunday. It's got to be every part of our being. Every moment of our being. All the Father has is ours. Amen. If we're not living out of, of grace, the grace of God, then, then what are we living out of? That's the whole problem with the fall in the first place. You see that? We'll see some things, hallelujah. See that? We got a wonderful life, and this life is within us. Thank you. It's within us, family. We got we to gotta understand that. It is within us. Within us. Remember, the scriptures tell us the, earth, the man was formed from the what? Dust of the ground. God didn't form it from the dust of the ground. Go, go put dust in it. God breathed in him. Y'all please hear this. God breathed in him. You see that? Hallelujah. We got to understand that. What we, what we have in us because of the work of redemption. There's a tree of life in the middle of the paradise of God. Now let me say something right here. Just like you can see the garden. And picture man as you can see a garden in a garden. We already said the problem happened in the mind. You see that? The consciousness of what, what was really going on around them. Something happened with that. That was because of disobedience. Eating of another tree. I'm going to tell you even right now. There's a tree of good and evil. And there's a tree of life in the midst of the garden. Amen. Did you hear them moving anywhere? Nope. Uh, scripture? No, you don't. So what's got to happen? We've got to choose then to eat from the tree of life. Right. We're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. No, won't keep you long. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to talk about that. So how do we get to do that? Christ Jesus is the tree in the midst of us. If you're not always eating of him, you go, what are you going to do? You're going to be listening to, to, to good eating of good and evil. Should I do this or should I do that? Well, I don't like this and I don't like that. That's got, you got to look, that's not in you anymore if you were in Christ. And if we listen, here's the key. Living in the spirit. That's not decoration back there. Living in the spirit. See that? That, that the knowledge of good and evil, that tree, we don't eat from that. Amen. We don't eat from that. Blessed be the 
name of the Lord. We don't eat from that. For this cause, the Son of God was manifested that he what might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Either we're going to believe it and eat from this tree of life that Jesus is, or we'll just be bumbling through the earth forever how much time grace gives us, leaning to our own understanding and just making a big mess. See that? So, what's the situation here? What is it that we need? What do we, what do we need? We need to eat from the tree of life. God fixed it so that could happen. What did he do? He sent his son. Yep. Who was he? The word. The word. Jesus came. Let's go over to John's gospel, if you don't mind. John chapter 6. We're going to just take up, I, I need to slow myself down. You don't need to. <laughs> just get excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 6. I want us to, we're going to draw some things out of here. But here's the situation. Just because man was disobedient and fell, now, listen, conform, this very thing the scriptures say don't be, you know, be not conformed to this world, but listen to the average person. They got a sin consciousness. Oh, I'm just old. So, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. No, you're not. And I know people get upset with me for telling you that, but I'm still going to tell you because it's the truth. No, you are not. Amen. See that? Amen. Hallelujah. No, you are not. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. That is the consciousness, the mindset that we need to have. A new creation. We've been born from above. See that? All those things that that the flesh and carnality, like, like I said, this wrong identity, all that, yeah. we've been immersed in that yeah. all our lives. Amen. We got it from our parents, they got it from their parents, and you can go on back and trace it back to this fall. Amen. See that? Yeah. That's not true of us, nope. according to the Spirit of God. Nope. So what does God do? He sends his son. He sends his son. He sends the Christ. He sends the Lord Jesus, obedient unto death. To the degree that Adam corrupted us, Christ Jesus has put us back, the last Adam, into right standing with God. And we got to understand that. And that's not something that happens by and by. That's something that happens in this life. If it did happen in this life, how would the Apostle Paul have been able to write the things that he wrote? How would John or Patmos would have had communication with the Spirit of God? So it happens in this life. You understand that? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. They need help. God, exactly. God showed them even in the wilderness. You're coming out of bondage. You're coming out of the world system. You, you listen, you need something from the homeland to sustain you while you're walking. Somebody please hear God. Please hear the Lord. You need something from where you really from. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've taken you out and I've chosen you for a purpose. I'm going to set you apart so all the people of the earth will know that my hand is upon you, that I'm your God and you're my people. Amen. See that? Amen. So what I'm going to do, you need something from home. Your true home is spirit in me. So I'm going to send bread from heaven. I'm going to send manna. You know what's so amazing to me, Bishop Paul? I just thought about this. At honest to God, I thought about this. It came up in my spirit when we were in praise. Manna. Manna is not what God called it. The people called it because they woke up and there's this something this Bible said looked kind of like the coriander, like the hoarfrost, and, and it, it had taste like a wafer with honey that they just described, but they don't know what it is. Right. They don't know what it is. You are not going to be able to can this up, package this up, because it is God. He can take any form that he wants to when he gets ready and will be available for everybody. I feel fire. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You see this? You don't know what it is because it came from heaven. You got to actually experience heaven so you know what this is. You don't know what this is because it came from Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why they were so full of flesh. Mind so carnal. We're tired of this. We're tired of it. You're tired of it? You're tired of manna? You're tired of what God sent from heaven? I've seen it. I've seen people get tired of what God sent from heaven. 
I ain't gonna try something else. Wow. I've seen people get tired of what God sent from heaven. You hear this? You don't even know what it is. Wow. But you know it's sustaining you. Y'all hear God? You know it's different. All you can kind of do is compare it to something that you know in the earth, but you know this is very oh, different. Really? That's why you're saying it's like this and it's like that, because you really don't have anything in earth to compare it to. Right, yeah. See that? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. So we'll call it manna. So since you know that's what it is, that's what you refer to it, then the scriptures keep on referring to it. We're going to read after a while, and we keep studying some hidden manna. You know what I'm saying? Then, that's what he does in the, in the wilderness family. See that? Here comes Jesus, the Son of God. I am bread from heaven. He could have said, I'm, I'm bread sent from God. He told you he's from heaven. Y'all hear that? That's where you're from. You hear that? That's where you're from. Where God is ruling and reigning, where spirit, where it's all spirit, that's where you're from. I need to sustain you, not just you, everybody in the earth. I need to sustain with the bread from heaven. Mm. See that? So how do I do that? I sent my son. Who is he? Came, it was in the beginning. The word. The word. I asked you to go to John 6. We just pull out a few verses. Look at verse, um, it's a very long chapter. Uh, set, uh, look at verse 38. All this Jesus talking when I say this. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I came down from heaven. I came, I came down from heaven. Glory to God. Verse 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And, and the Jews murmured, why? They murmured at him, why? Because he said this, I am the bread which came down from heaven. See this? Any time, and I tell you all this, when you work in your own ministry and you're apart from the fellowship, Remember that the bread of life is always with you. You're going to run into static when you realize that your possession, that God has given you what he said he gave you and you were wise enough to receive it and you're understanding what it is that God gave you. When you minister out of the heavenlies, you're going to run into fierce opposition. You see that? So don't think it's strange. Don't let that shake you and move you. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 42. And they said, listen, this is what you're going to run into. Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? You see this? You might know the earthly parent, but you don't know my father in heaven. You see that? You can't, if, you, if, you, if someone says that they came down from heaven and you try to argue with that, you can't know the heavenly father. You see that? Hallelujah. How is it then that he's saying, I came down from heaven? Skip down to verse uh, 51. Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. We need stuff from home to eat. It wasn't working in like it was in the earth. Like things are not working today and people are trying to patch it up. And even uh, many ministries are realizing we just don't have the power. I read something the other day. I, talk, I called Bishop Paul and told him about it. Somebody over there, in, uh, somewhere over in, in Europe, I think it was Ireland, the priest needed help with an exorcism. You see what I'm saying? You need help with it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread which I give, what? It's my flesh <clears throat> which I give for the life of the world. Down to verse 58. This is that bread which can't, let me go back up here, verse 57. As the living Father have sent me and I live by the Father. You hear this? The same thing Jesus is saying, we got to get that mindset and we got to keep it day by day, family. I live by the Father. 
So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. See that? Live by me. Not live by the rules and regulations of the world. See that? Not let your spiritual life be guided at copying things in the world, but we live by the thought. Like Bishop Paul said, he's my counselor. I won't listen to anybody but him. Praise God. Amen. See that? This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread, listen here, shall live forever. I need to bring you some information from home. <clears throat> that Christ Jesus is our, 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 our food now. Yes. But that's, he's, he's the one that sustains us, blessed be his holy name. Yep. I'm here, listen, I'm here if... God says, listen, that we are to walk in the spirit or live in the spirit. I'm here to acclimatize you to spirit. Y'all hear that? Amen. I'm here to, get, to make sure you're adapted to spirit. Y'all see how things are changing? Yeah. Did, did any person have anything to do with that? No. That's the power of God. That is the very power of God working in and through us. Wow. Not by might nor power, but by the spirit. That's another thing we have to remember. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, I, Jesus said, I didn't come just to tell you about something. Just like they ate manna. Listen, I come to be in you. In you, y'all hear God. In you. In you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is in us. Glory, hallelujah. Now people will stop worrying so much about going somewhere and realize who you be. Yes, amen. And we wake up to just who we are in the Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need our nourishment from home. Let's go to Acts 10 and, look and see how this looks. I'll tell you just uh, we do this and, and, and we'll be done. Acts chapter 10, remember the story of Cornelius? I'll read probably and skip about a little bit. Cornelius, verse 1 of Acts chapter 10, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian, of the band called the Italian band. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to people and prayed to God always. Now listen. Does that sound like a real good Christian right there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you think if that was enough, then that would just be it and it could stop. Would somebody hear God yeah. now? Yeah. Why we need the Spirit. You hear this right here? Mm -hmm. If everybody, people are striving to attain this right here that this man has, has attained. But there's something else. Uh -huh. See that? There's something we need from home, family. Uh -huh. Glory to God. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day. An angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? See, now, see this right here? Yeah. This sounds just like John over in the Revelation. Yeah. See how John is speaking messengers? He thinks it's Lord. Mm -hmm. See that? This it should be no difference in us, family. If you see me, Jesus said, you've seen the Father. If I see you all, I should see the Lord. You see me, you should see the Lord. Glory to God. He said, thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He should tell thee what thou art to do. When the angel was spoken to Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, a devout soldier of them that waited on him, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Now see, this way I always interject something like this so it'll wake us up. You don't hear about him going to anybody else asking their opinion, what should I do? You've been in contact with a messenger from God that gave you instruction. You see that? By the Spirit, you should know whether it's of God. And we and need to move out, <coughs> excuse me, smartly with that. Verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, 
he fell into a trance and saw heaven open. You see this right here? And a certain vessel descended unto him, and it had, as it had been a great sheep. Let me stop right here and say something. This word sheet is fine linen. Y'all hear this? Yep. When you get over to the Revelation, what is the fine linen? Righteousness, Righteousness of saints. You hear this right here? He's in a trance and he sees this come down, this, this great sheet, knit at four corners and let down to the earth. Four corners, universal number. See that? Nobody's left out of this. No, no one. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Now, if you were Hebrew, you would, you would, those kind of things would just, and you brought up in the tradition, this would just ring out to you. So listen to his response. There came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. In my Bible, that's in red, Lord speaking. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything that is, listen, common. See that? Or unclean. In other words, listen. Listen what we have here now. You got on the one hand this devout man, and he, but he's, he needs spiritual help. You got one that was so close to the Lord, he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration with him. See that? So close to God. Every time you see the post-resurrection, he's there. All this, and now he's still worried about keeping the law. Would somebody wake up and hear God? Amen. This is what I keep telling We're not under the law. We're under grace. we got to let grace do its perfect work in our lives. As long as we keep mixing and worrying about this and worrying about that, it's not getting the power that it needs. You see what I'm saying? We're not giving it its place. It's got the power on its own, but we're not giving it its place. So that it can transform us. You see that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, here's this Peter there. So he says, Bishop Paul, you might have to help me here where, where I stop at. That's something in my mind. 14. 14. Peter said, not so, Lord. I have never eaten anything that's common or unclean. Okay, and the voice <laughs> spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Well, Sister Bynum, you keep telling people, preach Christ and him crucified and what that means to us. Well, yeah, I got to. I got to right here. Because otherwise, people won't know they're clean. Right. You hear this? Yeah. Why should I preach something else? What God, here's Peter, like I said, was walking with the Lord. And the Lord's got to tell him, what I cleanse, call not thou common. See, the thing about it, though, he walked with the Lord. Listen, that's a, this is what we're doing right now. We are feeding on his redemptive work, and we're living in the power of his resurrection, but that's the growth we're seeing over with these churches. You see that, the overcomer? Mm -hmm. The overcomer's got to grow up into these things. That's why we don't have time to play around. We don't have time to play around. Glory to the name of the Lord. This was done, look, listen, thrice, three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And while Peter doubted himself with the vision, should mean, behold, men that were sent from Cornelius made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Listen, here three men coming that Cornelius asked for. Moving in obedience to what the messenger of the Lord told him, they're coming to get Peter. So listen, you, they're not going to have any resistance because of what the number speaks to. That's spiritual completion. Three. See that? So, he, Peter might have these reservations, and we're going to see that in a little bit. It says, Arise therefore, get thee down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Family, there's so many lessons unraveling here in Acts chapter 10, if we would just listen. If we we'll be, be obedient to God, you see how God has already worked out the other end before they even get there? Yeah. And people be worried, well, I wonder who I'm going to run into it. But don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. If God sent you, then everything else is fixed. 
I was just praising the Lord the other day. The Lord has just been, for 27 years, she's just been so faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Just so faithful yeah. in this yeah. work, yeah. in every aspect of this work. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So then, then Peter went down to the men which were sent from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you see. What is the cause? Wherefore ye are come? They said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one that feared God, and a good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into, the, into his house and hear words of thee. See this? Something you have by the Spirit that the people need to hear. <clears throat> They're already positioned. That's why I told you I can tell. I know what Jesus meant when of uh, all those people in that press, that woman touched him. Her faith was so strong. Yeah. He said, who touched me because virtue left me? I can tell it every time. When hearts are fixed to come and hear something from God, or when somebody just comes to, to just, just out of the most, well, it's Sunday, it's time to go to church, somebody hear God. Listen, we, if we come with the right heart, we can expect to hear from him every time. Right. Every time, if it's just one word. Right. See that? I can tell that because it, like, it pulls out of me. It's not something that I have to work to do. It just flows out and it's reaching someone. So don't anybody tell me this doesn't work because I know it does. Right. Glory to God. Right. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. And certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And tomorrow they entered Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. I know some of you may know this story, but be patient. People get it, the message and they may not know it. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him. Listen to now what we've been reading in the Revelation and see if you see the similarities. Fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up saying, stand up, I myself also am a man. Remember John, when he kept meeting messengers over in the Revelation, in the spirit, he wanted to, to worship them. They said, I'm your fellow servant. Y'all hear God. Amen. Hallelujah. As, as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. He said unto them, you know how that is an, all, listen, an unlawful thing. Listen, y'all hear this? Do y'all hear this? This is why we have to pray for one another. Yeah. Nobody knows so much that they don't need prayer. Right. I hope y'all praying Amen. for us. Amen. We can hear the Lord as we do for each other. Yeah. See that? <clears throat> Since he, he tells them, you know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. Listen, or come unto one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. See, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm ministering today. So people will say, see, we're all a one. If people saw that in the world, a lot of this confusion would stop. Yep. You're not going to stop this having little seminars and little, quote, awareness, stuff like that. Uh, seminars, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. the, the, what, what people do and then five years later, they back worse shape than they were before. You understand that? Yeah. You know, see what I'm saying? I know it's good intention and it may bring something for the moment. You may pick out some and help just a few people, but we're talking about things that are eternal here. And there's a difference, glory to God. He, it was by the Spirit. You see, Cornelius is sending for someone to come and speak with him. Peter, by the Spirit, needs spiritual help for him. You hear the difference in that? You, you hear that? He need, Peter needs to hear by the Spirit to keep going on up higher. You understand that? He needs some help as well. See that? Cornelius is looking what, what the messenger said, go send for a man. God knows. Peter got his information from God. Y'all hear the difference in what I'm trying to say? And that's what we need to be hearing. We, our information, the counselor, needs to be God. You see that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, come what are you going to hear? Hear words of words of thee. Now, suppose you suppose you, you sit for somebody and they, they ain't got their mind on God. Mm. Or they got their own agenda. Right. And you want to hear words from them. It better be the leading of God. Amen. Amen. 
that you said for somebody. You understand that? It, 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 it better be in God working his whole plan out. So then, what does he do? Then he called he them in, lodged them. On the morrow, Peter went away with them. A certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. The morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and their friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet, worshiping. Peter took him up, stand up, I'm a man myself. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were together. I'd already read that. He said, you know how that's an unlawful thing. I want us to say this again, because Peter is growing in the spirit. Don't you ever treat somebody, when you walking and breathing in this earth, that they know everything you need to know. We are spirit, and we need to depend on the spirit of God. See that? So he knows now that he shouldn't call, listen, any man coming or unclean. He said, therefore, I came to you without gainsaying or arguing about it. As soon as I was sent for I asked, therefore, for what intent you have sent for me. And Cornelius said, for, then he goes, Cornelius goes and tells him exactly what we just read. You see that? Uh, that how he had a, the heavenly messenger come and visit him and how he's been waiting on the Lord. So verse Verse, uh, he knows he's supposed to hear all the things that are commanded uh, of God from Peter. So verse 34, Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive God is no respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. You see this right here? People don't understand the power of this cross. Well, don't they have to do this and... Don't they have to do that? Do, do I need to, to read the verse, verse 34 again? Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But they didn't come like we did. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all today and began from Galilee after the baptism of John, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. See, this is what I'm saying. We need help from the homeland. What was wrong with the people then? Oppressed of the devil. See that? You hear that? Oppressed. You got people oppressed now. You know they're oppressed. Uh, uh, you got to be oppressed of, of the devil and you're going to go just go shoot up everybody. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. We need, Jesus is the remedy. We need to be eating from the tree of life. Right. If we eat from the tree of life, let me show you how this works. You eat from the tree of life that Christ is. He'll start showing you great and mighty things. He'll open up your understanding. You just read the Bible just to just an average verse, like verse, like chapter 10 of Acts wasn't in my notes for the day, but God put them in there. You see what I'm saying? You just you just, just let the Lord teach you. And then you can't keep it to yourself. Like, oh, look at this. This fits so good in a lesson, and I'll just keep this to myself. Is that not the craziest thing you ever heard? It's meant to be given out. It's meant to, don't you worry about how many people see it. You just know that if it's the truth, God can get it in the hands of one person, and that one person can make a worldwide difference. Amen. I have never worried about numbers. Y'all hear this? Because the one thing I know with the message that's coming through this house, average people are not going to sit through it. They got too many other things on their mind. You're going to need to have your mind on Christ and going on to perfection to even want to sit in this house. And I understand that. See, when people need something, when they need a place, and that's fine with me. When people go through, and you watch it. Some of you have been here long enough to see what I'm talking about. People may be going through situations, and they can't find no help out there. So they come and hang out with us for a while. And then when, they, when things, what they think is leveled off, then you don't see them no more. But that's fine with me. This is a healing center. But the human needs are sin, sickness, and spiritual death. I can't heal any of that. Only Christ can. So why should I be worried about who stays and who goes? The only thing I know is God is going to keep this place holy and pure. And that's all I need to be concerned about is listening to him. You understand that? 
<clears throat> you see that? So he keeps teaching them about Jesus. We almost dumped this, so I'll just run through and finish. God raised him up the third day, showed him openly. See, this is the part you need to hear. Cornelius, you're doing a great work, but you need food from home. Y'all hear the Lord? Yeah. <clears throat> you need food from spirit to help. It's going to balance you. A lot of people so out of balance. A lot of people in church out of balance because they're not getting food from home. When I say home, I'm talking about the spirit of God, the heavenly realm, the paradise of God. I tell you one thing, it was paradise, glory to God, and it's still paradise as long as the spirit, everybody in there is in the spirit. You get out of the spirit, you get kicked out of Eden. You understand that? Yeah. You get kicked out of paradise. See that? Blessed be the name of the Lord. The thief on the cross said, Lord, let's take, when, remember me when you get into your kingdom. You'll be with me in paradise today. See that? You, can, you can't be dead and still sitting. Right. <laughs> Y'all here, go. Amen. And nobody got nothing against you dead. I told y'all before, who is over at the cemetery? Well, John Doe, you owe, you still owe me $500. What good would that do? That's right. You see what? Nothing. When you dead and buried, and nothing against you. You see what I'm saying? Right. You're going to be with me in paradise today. You, in fact, you're going to spirit today. Wow. And you're going to be in, with me in paradise forever. Yeah. And see, flesh is so sensual and carnal, people don't realize that, that they think this realm is just limited. And as I told y'all, it's too late for me. I've had too many experiences from that other side. Don't tell me that it ain't real. Glory to God. You tell somebody else that they had any experience. But don't tell me it's not real because I've been in contact with it. Glory to God. And I'm not talking about this, 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 uh, what do they call it? Voodoo stuff. I'm talking about what God allowed to give me assurance and dreams and things. And fit. Just like Peter had this trance. I've had many of them. You see that? Glory to God. And I'm sure some of you have too, if not all of you. So we're almost done with this. It says um, he rose from the dead, verse 41. It said, let me go back up and read this. God, verse 40, how God, him, God raised the dead the third day. Listen, showed him openly. I was in the boat when he said to put the net on the right side. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Now this is a spiritual testimony because Jesus was raised from the dead when this miracle was done. You see? Mm -hmm. Not all, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Yeah. Peter, you got this great all this great stuff that has happened to you, but you're still learning, aren't you? You just learned something very powerful. That God is not a respecter of persons. All you got to do is just love him and seek righteousness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it's he which was ordained of God to be the judge, listen, of the quick or the living and the dead. He is. Jesus is. Yeah. To him... Give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So you believe in him? You believe in him? And ministers, pastors will know that you have been up to that altar 10 or 20 times and they'll still stand up there and call you a sinner. Yes. Okay. It is not okay. No. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. All, listen fell on all them who listen, which heard the word. Yep. Peter didn't have anything to do with that part. No, not at all. He just said what God said to yeah. say. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost fell on them just like it did the others at Pentecost. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then the circumcision which believed were astonished, Minister Marshall. Amen. They were astonished yes. as many as came with Peter. Because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here's something now from the homeland. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs the Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. Because they heard them speak with the tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. God is so good to us. He's so good to us. We saw, we gave a diagram out um, Wednesday. 
and we saw how the churches, Ephesus, to the overcomer, we get to eat of the tree of life that's in the midst of the paradise of God. See that? And we said that overcoming reward is the foundation for all the rest of them. Because when you end with Laodicea, theirs is to sit with me in my throne. So you, we're not going tagging churches what you did wrong. All of us need to learn because spiritually we're tied into them some way. Or they wouldn't be in the scripture. Not in the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, amen. So, so I want to thank God so much just for your patience. I want to thank God for your understanding that we have not been this way before. Y'all hear God? In Christ... Goal is met, victory is won. But experientially, we haven't been this way before. Amen. And we gotta stay in the way that Christ is. See that? We gotta stay in the way that he is. Another voice we can't follow now. It's not trying to hem anybody in. You don't go to restoration, you won't know this. There's many ways to here. You can get it. I'm not saying anybody has to sit in here. I'm just telling you that we're in a place spiritually where my brother got something the other day in the mail from a brother, and um, he's out of New Mexico. And I showed Paul the booklet. I, had, I don't know what they've been teaching, but on the very front of it, it said, Heirs of God. I flipped the book up at first because I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And then again, I said, I do believe it because we should be all on the same, Amen. same page. Y'all get along? Amen. Amen. So all over, it can look like whatever out there. But to tell you the truth, um, be safe and secure from all along. Because we are in the one who is safety, who is peace. You see that? What we need to concentrate on is keeping this awareness that we are one with Father. And as we keep that awareness, you don't realize what's emitting from you. Like, like Jesus raised from the dead, and what do they see? Light. Light above the noonday. You don't realize when you walk in your workplace what you are emitting. You understand me? Like these lights are giving off light. You can't see it, but it's spirit. Yeah. And it's coming from you. You see that? So even that is making a difference in the world. You understand that? Your prayers are making a difference. Your prayers of thanksgiving that we're all one in God. Just by saying that, you're, it, you, we're making a difference. And that's all I can do is just tell you that as he shows it unto me. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.